the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 280, Malachi 1 to 4. The absence of acknowledging God's 1,500 years of love. God's love, which was constant towards Israel for 1,500 years, was rejected due to the people's indifference and ignorance. First point. Chronologically, Malachi should be read after reading Ezra and Nehemiah. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Chronologically, Malachi was written around the same time as Ezra and Nehemiah, and thus it is beneficial to read Malachi after reading Ezra and Nehemiah. Ezra's ministry focused on the returned captives and their repentance. Nehemiah's ministry focused on the reconstruction of the temple walls and the system of paying tithe. Malachi, on the same lines, also delivered God's message to the people. God spoke for 47 out of 55 verses in the book of Malachi. And this was the highest percentage of God speaking directly, 85.4%. This was because the returned captives were going in the way of surface-level worship. The Bible records numerous types of offerings which were done just as a show. The first example is Saul. The second is Jeroboam, who changed the price and method of making offering altogether. Third, the people of North Israel and South Judah were also in this state, and thus were rebuked by Amos, Hosea, Isaiah, and Micah in 8th century BC. Fourth was when Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem for the second time and the people had no heart in their offering. Now God rebuked the people through Malachi for their heartless offering. After the construction of the Jerubbabel temple, the people no longer served idols, but they also did not wholeheartedly serve God. They offered to God low-quality offerings that they would never have offered to their governor. They made offerings to God with diseased and infected animals. God, through Malachi, stated that this was all just a show for them. Second point, Malachi recorded the very unfortunate conversation between God and the people. A long time ago, God had made a covenant with Abraham's descendants on Mount Sinai. And for 1,500 years, God loved them continuously. But Abraham's descendants who entered Canaan sinned before God for 900 years. And despite God's punishment through Assyria and Babylon, they continued to sin afterwards. To these people, God told them that He had loved them for 1,500 years. But to this, the people asked how God had loved them. Because of this, God did not speak for the next 400 years. The next thing God showed was Jesus Christ, a true symbol of how He had loved and loves us. Third point. God rebuked the priestess for making the people go in wrong directions. When God first gave the people the laws of a kingdom of priestess, He told them not to wander from left to right. God said this to Joshua. He also said this to South Judah through Isaiah, through Daniel, and to the returned captives through Malachi. Now God pointed out the sins of the priestess. God declared that he wished to cross the gates of the temple because of the sins of the priests. God indeed eventually closed the gates of the temple for Israel, but he planned to be glorified by all nations. This was to be fulfilled by Jesus Christ, the Messiah. God then warned the people through Malachi. God used very strong words 
to pour out the most severe curses on the people as a warning. Animal excrement after the offering was supposed to be burnt outside the temple. God told the priests that the excrement would be smeared on their faces. The reason why God cursed them to such an extent was because the priests had led the people in wrong directions, broken the covenant of Levi, confused the people of the law, and did not keep to God's ways. Thus, God declared that he would punish them severely. God wanted the priests to mediate between God and the people and to be responsible for the tasks involved in the temple. However, they went in the opposite direction. First point, God rebuked the returned captives for stealing tithes and offerings. God told Malachi that the Messiah was to come soon. This was a response to the question of where God's justice had gone. After declaring the coming of the Messiah, God told the people through Malachi to repent. God rebuked the people for stealing tithe and offerings. God then told the people to offer sincere tithe. God said that a sincere tithe would ensure that they would prosper and their surrounding countries would become most envious of them. Fifth point, God declared that on his decided day, he would send a rider to the people. God told Malachi that the returned captives were going against God. At the time, the people had doubts of whether God really existed. They moreover thought that the arrogant people became blessed and that the evil prospered and proclaimed that God was not righteous. To this, God declared that he would record the names of those who obeyed him. God moreover claimed that on his day he would judge the world. God went on to explain the final judgment day. God would punish the evil and bless the righteous. Now God gave the conclusion to the entire Old Testament. He told the people to remember and implement God's laws and regulations. God also proclaimed that he would send Elijah. The Elijah God spoke of here was referring to John the Baptist. As such, God revealed his grieving heart to Malachi and went into a deep silence for 400 years. But then God, with his grace and mercy, sent John the Baptist before sending Jesus Christ to the people. 400 years later, the people heard John the Baptist say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondok app. The Tondok app is not like any other app in the world today, as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought-after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting-edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondok app.